Over the past couple of years, you might have seen videos titled how I study 12 hours a day to the point where I feel like if someone is in the studying niche and they want to blow up their channel, that's the number one idea that they go for. You want to know something though? You don't need to study 12 hours a day. By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly why these videos are just pure waffle and they're toxic and you'll know exactly what you need to do to get the top grades while only studying an hour a day. Now, first of all, it's obvious that these videos produce a toxic studying culture that basically pushes the idea that you need to lock yourself in the library or in your room for literally half of your existence and slave away to the textbook just to get the top grades. I don't want to live that way and I'm sure you don't either. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Yusuf. I personally got on the top grades in GCSEs and A-levels, which is the British high school system. And I've also helped thousands of students do the same. And guess what? I did it with an average of one hour per day studying. You see these videos that tell you that you need to study 12 hours a day and show you how, they're preying on your fear. But don't worry, I'm here to tell you that you don't need to study for half of the day. And let's be honest, nothing in this life is worth 12 hours a day doing. Now, why do some people think that they need to study for 12 hours a day? Well, it's all about efficiency. If someone is telling you that they're revising for 12 hours a day consistently, then you should know that they're most likely getting only a couple of hours of real revision in. Firstly, when people say that they're studying for 12 hours a day, most of the time they include the breaks that they take between the revision sessions. That alone could add up to a couple of hours. Not only that though, they're also including passive revision techniques which are basically useless. They don't contribute to revision whatsoever. If I do a passive revision technique for 10 hours, yes, it might feel like I've studied but by the end of that session, I haven't actually benefited anything. And there's studies that prove this. For example, this study compared groups that used active versus passive revision techniques. And obviously, the active studying techniques scored way higher. Now, let me get one thing very clear. This video is general. If you're that one guy studying medicine at Cambridge or computer engineering at MIT, I get it. Your course is probably hard and you might need to study a lot throughout the day just to pass. But most people watching this video aren't doing that. Most of you don't need to revise 12 hours a day, not even six, maybe three if you're really pushing it. And I'll tell you exactly how you could do this. Before that though, if you're doing your GCSEs or A-levels and you want to jump up three grades in the next couple of months, especially with exams right around the corner, I'll teach you exactly how you can do that. Just click the first link in the description. Now, if you want to study efficiently, then there's three principles that you have to follow and make sure you stick around until the last one because it's something that people don't give any consideration. Now, the first principle is very simple. It's basically just the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule states that 80% of the results will come from 20% of the action. So in the context of studying for the average person, if they do a test, 80% of the results that they got on that test will come from 20% of the revision that they did. So if they score 100 on any given test, then 80% of those marks will come from 20% of the things that they did while revising, which means that 80% of their revision only contributed 20% of the results. It goes both ways, which means that the majority of their revision didn't actually contribute that much at all. And so if we can find that 20% of the revision that got 80% of the marks, and we just do that 100% of the time, think of how much more efficient our revision could be. A lot of people ask, what is that 20% though? Well, like I said before, it's just active revision techniques. I can guarantee you right now that if you only implement active studying techniques from now on, you'll cut down the amount of studying that you do per day while seeing a jump in your grades. I've personally done it, and I've also helped thousands of students just like you do it as well. You might ask, how do I know if a given studying technique is active though? The way I think about it is very simple. If you're engaging with information, if you're engaging with the content, then it's active. If your brain is forced to do something with that information, then it's active. If not, then it's passive. For example, going through flashcards, is that active or passive? Well, let's think about it. You first have to read the question, think of the answer, and then formulate it in your brain, and then check it. In that whole process, you're forcing your brain to come up with the answer. And so it's active. Now let's compare that to reading and highlighting. Is that active or passive? Well, you're sort of just reading the information. There's no reason for your brain to actually take that information in. You're not testing yourself. You're not summarizing it. And so it's passive. Now, active recall is very important. However, if you go through the information once actively, over time, you're naturally still going to forget it. That's just how the brain works. And so to get a complete efficient studying routine, we have to couple active recall with spaced repetition. Spaced repetition, as the name suggests, is just going through the information periodically. When you force your brain to engage with the information at set intervals of time, you're then giving your brain a reason to store the information. Therefore, your brain will remember it longer. Now, that's the first principle where we talk about the studying techniques. The second principle is the studying session itself, what I like to call the external revision. Things like, where do you study? When do you study? How long do you study for in a given session? Should you study with friends? Should you listen to something while studying? All of these questions I've made videos about and I've answered, but the most important ones in my opinion are, how long are you studying for per session? And when do you study throughout the day? A lot of students feel bad about procrastinating or they'll see these videos and get motivated and tell themselves, you know what, for the next three hours, I'm gonna study and nothing else. They've actually done studies and found that the most optimal time for a focused session 
is actually 40 minutes. Beyond that point, your brain starts losing focus. And so it's actually more beneficial for you to take a break and come back so that you could restart the cycle rather than just plateauing and not actually getting in any information. Now, this is called the Pomodoro technique and there's thousands of videos that you could watch about it. Now, that's the first important question. How long should you study for in each session? The second question is when throughout the day should you study? A general rule of thumb is just try to study as early as possible because that's when your brain is as refreshed as possible. Now, the third and final principle of efficient studying is to optimize the rest of your lifestyle and most importantly, sleep. Even if you have the most advanced studying technique in the world, if you don't get your sleep right, you're not gonna get the top grades. Fixing your sleep alone can give you a jump of two to three letter grades on its own, if your sleep is already lacking. And if you look into it, most of the learning that we do is actually brought together while we sleep, not while we study. And so if you're not sleeping right, you're not completing the learning process. It's like making a cake. You mix all the ingredients together, you put it in a cake pan, but then instead of putting it in the oven, you just leave it on the countertop. Now, if you come back in a couple of hours, would you be surprised that the cake is not baked? And so in the studying session itself, you're only bringing the ingredients together. But to bake the cake, then you need to properly sleep. Likewise, exercise is also a huge factor. There are a lot of studies that talk about not only the physical, but also the mental benefit of exercise. There are hormones and endorphins that are released when you study that are directly correlated to your performance on an exam. And so when everyone else is trying to study 12 hours a day just to get the top grades, if you focus on the three principles of efficiency, I have no doubt that you'll get the top grades while minimizing the amount that you study per day. And if you're doing your GCSEs or A-levels and you wanna know how to jump up three grades in the next couple of months, and click the first link in the description.